transforming AI's black box into a glass box. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Sheldon Fernandez, CEO of Darwin AI. Welcome, Sheldon. Thank you very much. So what is Darwin AI known for? We are known for cracking the black box problem that is currently plaguing artificial intelligence. Um, so artificial intelligence is, as you know, extremely uh, used in business and industry, but it is a black box in so far as it'll do all these wonderful things, but we don't know how it's doing those things. So we have technology that was created by our academic team here in Canada that purports to solve and crack that problem. Speaking of the black box, Darwin AI recently published research findings on the topic of how enterprise can trust AI generated explanations. So start, start at the beginning, if you will, and explain AI's black box problem. So the problem with the black box in artificial intelligence is that we have these neural networks that are extremely powerful. Uh, and this is specifically deep learning, a, a facet of machine learning, which is itself a facet of artificial intelligence. And they learn by looking at thousands and sometimes hundreds of thousands of examples of data. So if you want to get a neural network to recognize um, a picture of a lion, let's say, you show it a million pictures of a lion and slowly you will train it to become very good at that task. The problem is we don't understand how the network has internally oriented itself to understand what a lion is. And so the problem is we don't have insight into how it reaches that conclusion. So although it can be very good at recognizing objects and self-driving cars and so forth, it is a black box to its designers. Um, to give you a very good example, there was a neural network a couple of years ago that became very good at recognizing horses. And it turns out that most professional pictures of horses, this was unknown to me, are professional pictures which have a copyright symbol. So it was looking for the copyright symbol at the bottom right of the picture, and that was a strong signal that it was a horse. And so the black box problem is sometimes you'll get the right answer, but for the wrong reasons. And so that is what we are grappling with in our industry is how do you open up this black box to understand why artificial intelligence is doing what it's doing. You mentioned horses. Like, so in what real world scenarios does the black box problem manifest itself? Great question. Um, I'll give you a practical example from an autonomous vehicle client we worked with. So this was a client that noticed very strange behavior with one of their autonomous vehicles where the car would turn left with increasing statistical frequency when the color of the sky was a certain shade of purple, right? Now, as a human being, you know that the color of the sky should not influence turning direction. And so they were mystified as to why this was happening. Using our technology, they were able to determine that they had trained the car for this particular turning scenario in the Nevada desert when the color of the sky was this shade of purple. And this was the correlation that the artificial intelligence had picked up on, right? If the color of the sky is this, I should turn this way. And it's what we call a nonsensical correlation because it is a conclusion that the artificial intelligence is inferring based on data, not on the real world. And so when, when it's looking at data, sometimes that data has bias, sometimes it's imperfect. Um, so that was a very practical example with potentially disastrous consequences that we were help, that we were able to help them, you know, address. How do you go about understanding the methodology behind how neural networks work? Okay, so great question. So the irony is that we have to use other forms of artificial intelligence to do it, right? So the problem is neural networks are so complex; they're kind of like our brain where there's so many variables and so many layers that it's mathematically infeasible to go through it one by one and understand what is influencing a particular decision. So the IP that was invented by our professors, you know, four or five years ago, uses other forms of artificial intelligence to understand neural networks. And then it surfaces those explanations. And then the key question is, okay, how do you know that that explanation is valid given that it's, it itself was generated by artificial intelligence. Well, this was the research that we published in December of last year. And what our researchers said, they came up with a framework where they say, if you are going to hypothesize that this is what is influencing a decision, you use a counterfactual approach. So you take those hypothetical reasons that you thought were causing you know, the decision, you remove them from the input, and you see if the decision appreciably changes. And if it does, you can be fairly confident that 
what you thought was causing the decision was in fact causing the decision. So we came up with this framework, we proposed research, and then we showed that compared to state-of-the-art methods, our technique uh, was demonstrably better. And we're actually releasing a medium piece around this uh, this week to kind of walk people through that methodology. So for those contemplating an AI solution or, or those who may have already have one in place, what are your recommendations on how they should explain what went into their black box and, and why the result can be trusted? Yeah, so there's different levels of explainability is the first thing I'd say, right? There's explainability to a designer, a developer, an engineer that's very technical. And the benefit to them understanding explainability is it gives them the confidence that they are creating an AI system that is more robust and will work in these edge case scenarios that, that I mentioned. Then there's the explainability to the consumer or the person that is using the AI. Uh, explaining to a radiologist, for example, why I classify this as cancer. That is the next level of explainability that needs to be built on the first. So what we are doing as an industry right now is really building that foundational explainability. So technical folk, engineers, data scientists have that confidence um, in, in having a robustness behind their models, and then they can surface the reason to somebody who's not necessarily as technical. Um, so it's really to begin with that technical uh, understanding is, is the recommendation I would give before you even think about explaining to somebody whether mortgage was rejected by an AI. Sheldon Fernandez, CEO of Darwin AI. If somebody wants to connect with you, Sheldon, what's the best way they can do that? Uh, so they can go to our website, darwinai.com. Uh, they can also look me up on LinkedIn, um, and they can also email me at sheldon at darwinai.ca. Sounds good. And find more of my interviews right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.